2021 BT Award. When it comes to the B, I'm gonna skip around. I'm City Girls. I try to show you can bust the movie. Oh, uh, Carissa, please. The show opened up with um, Kirk Franklin. Anyway, I'm gonna go. Let me get your skinny motherfucking ass back out the goddamn way. I am so tired of Gabriella Wilson. Her mic and shit fucked up all the time. It's like, damn, they just be sabotaging her, don't they? Hell, the BET Her Award, I was so afraid that she was gonna be a nominate, that she was gonna be nominated and win that one shit. Her has won, quite ironically, a BET Her Award. When Cardi came out, she revealed her stomach, and Megan came up and accepted the award. And totally- I forgot to say, thank you, Cardi, for even putting me on WAP. Tyler Perry can. They threw shots. I'd like to address global issue, bonnet slander. I mean, who cares if we wear our bonnets in public? I just wanna know how this is an international issue. I'm just giving y'all a warning. You got a bonnet on and you looking like what the comb your hair? Well, that's not nice. <laughs> Everybody that's been showing us love here on my um, podcast, so on YouTube, um, I really appreciate everybody who has subscribed lately, who has downloaded a podcast episode, um, who's been on YouTube viewing us, just everybody around the globe, okay, who's been really supportive of the Herbie Band. I, 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 I get, my words cannot express how thankful I am of um, everyone. Who has, who has been here through it all. Um, so today, I really want to talk about a few things. The BET Awards. I've been watching the BET Awards to, to, to all my damn life. I truly have. Um, so let's get into this 2021 BET Award ceremony, guys. So, I'm gonna skip around. I'm not gonna go in order or in particular order, not in order of how the performance is went. Um, I'm just gonna basically skip around with these notes um, because I talked about a lot of things. I had a lot of notes as I was watching. I watched it over. So Bruno Mars and um, Anderson Pack. I believe that's his name. They did a really good job. I need notes with the damn song. I really like that song, but while I was listening to it, I heard another voice on the song. And I'm like, I think this song deserves to have one more person on it. Let's remix the song, right? And when we remix the song, how about we add, are you guys ready to hear who I think should be added on the remix to um, Bruno Mars and uh, Old Boy song? You know who I think should be added on this song? I think that Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack song should have the one and only Miss Mariah Carey. I really do. I believe that the song deserves to have Miss Mariah Carey on it. Um, I think that she would be a great addition to the song, honestly. Um, just imagine Mariah Carey vocals on that song with Bruno Mars. And um, I believe that's Anderson Pack. Imagine that. Imagine them on the song together and imagine somebody write out Mariah's lyrics and sing it in your own head how she would kill that song with them. Just 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 a remix and add her in there. It's gotta be Mariah Carey. I think Mariah would fucking kill the remix. Let's move on guys. That's all I want to say about Anderson Pack. And the song must be a banger. It really must be. 
But imagine adding Mariah Carey after it begins to die down on the um, hot whatever billboard, hot whatever it's on. Imagine when it begins to die down, they should add Mariah Carey. And I'll keep pushing that idea. You guys push that idea. Mariah Carey should be on the remix of that song. Honest to God, I truly believe that whole oh, artist. So let's move on. City Girls. Pop, 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 pop. City Girls. I just think that they could have come harder. I think that there was a lot of delay. I think that there was um, a lot of movement. And I understand that the girls nowadays are trying to show Little Kim and um, and Nicki Minaj, you know, who does not have any choreography moves herself. I guess they're trying to show that we can do more than be black female rappers. We can also um, bust a move, you know what I'm saying? I, I think any white female rapper that comes out, they kind of run away because I just thought about something that Iggy Azalea kind of busts a little bit of a move a little bit when she's rapping, um, but she is white. Um, and then while I was thinking about that, I was thinking, damn, they kind of ran her away from the scene, right? Um, she's no longer. Uh, we don't know anything, where she is, what she got going on, what she be doing. Um, around about now, you know what I mean? But I definitely think that the City Girls didn't do so well. Um, I think Carisha is still in this um, box, you know what I mean? I think Carisha still lives in her head. You know, she needs to get outside of her head. Uh, I think JT is still a little nervous at times, but JT is showing that no matter what, I'm gonna break through and work through my nervousness. But Carisha gives nerves, 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 um, every time she is performing, she never is um, at a level of um, all-time confidence, you know. Usually when Karisha get up on the stage, she always gives me that she nervous. She's just nervous. She ain't ready for this life yet. She say she ready out her mouth, but she ain't ready for this fame shit for real, for real. Karisha, let me... <laughs> but good job, City Girls. Um, speaking of the City Girls, um... Somebody who was very upset last night was um, T. She actually um, got upset, I'm assuming, because people um, was talking about her. Um, she was upset, so I guess she tweeted out saying, it's always something, JT, um, what did she say? Let's see what she said. JT said, it's always JT wig, JT clothes, but make sure y'all never leave out JT talented. But the bullshit, I like what I like, what I like, do what the fuck I do. So I think that um, she lacks a lot of confidence as well. Um, it's not the same as Carisha. I think JT can, she's all full of confidence because she knows she can rap, she knows she's talented, um, but she's not confident when it comes down to her look. Um, because the shoe always fit her when people begin to talk about her look, her swag, or her doing drugs. Um, either she does drugs, or she used to do drugs, and she ain't found the confidence in when she did it or when she do it. So it's hard for her to hear that kind of shit. You do drugs. You want go gang. That would get out. And she like, fuck you, Carisha. Go. Go to my ride. Oh, Carisha, please. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. The show opened up with um, Kirk Franklin. And um, I was like, damn, Kirk Franklin, no matter what, Kirk Franklin always, always brings the heat, okay? His music, um, the way, the, just his production. Um, every time he come on the stage, even if it's a slow song, you better believe he gonna bring it. Because that's just Kirk for you. Kirk is gonna always bring it. One thing, another thing about Kirk is his, the way he writes. His, his, his hand, he, he writes, like his music that he writes is just like on a whole nother level that is unexplainable. Um, no matter what song it is, and you're going through something, um, no matter what you're going through, you can find a song that relates to what you're going through that Kirk has made. And I promise you that, okay? If you don't know any of Kirk Franklin's other songs besides the single, 
songs that are always out on the radio, I urge you now, today, to go and download some of Kirk Franklin's music. Go to YouTube, go somewhere, listen to some of Kirk Franklin's songs that you have never played before or that you've never heard before. I challenge you now, okay, after this podcast plays, after this video plays, um, you guys go and check out Kirk Franklin, anything Kirk Franklin, anything Kirk Franklin that you honestly know that you've never tried to listen to, you've never thought to play it, you never gave it a thought. Um, I don't care what song it is, just play it. Say, hmm, I like this title, let me play this song. But moving on, Kirk Franklin actually brought out Lil, Lil Baby. That was a shocker. Um, and that's what I mean once again, Kirk Franklin always wins. He never fails because of his, 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 his pen, his, his, his gift in writing and, and, and just giving us that good, good, good sound. You know what I mean? Kirk is honestly, truly a beast when it comes down to this, this gospel industry and this pen thing. I think he could write an R&B, music, an R&B song if Kirk ever tried to. I honestly believe if Kirk tried to, he could honestly write an R&B song and it would work out for him. But Kirk did an awesome job. Um, he brought out, he brought out um, Lil Baby, um, a new song called We Win, and I loved it. Um, I thought about his son, Carry On Franklin. I was like, oh man, Carry On is probably so sad right now um, because he, he wants to get into the music industry. And Kirk Frank, um, him and Kirk Franklin has a, they have a, a strange um, relationship. They are not on good terms at the moment. So it kind of makes it hard, um, I guess, for him to really, um, you know, hear and see his father out here doing the damn thing the way he is. Um, and especially giving young men, young black men, opportunity when the opportunity could have been given to his own son. But Carry On can't expect that because I've witnessed Carry On be disrespectful to his parents before, um, well, to one of his parents, his mom, um, who I feel is the most important because she has not demonstrated disrespect to the public, to him in public, like his father has. Publicly, we know that his father has disrespected him. Okay, if you think I'm ready to say, but let me say it like this. When your bitch ass starts to disrespect that disrespect, you need to get your skinny motherfucking ass back out the uh, goddamn way before I put my foot in your ass. Because I, I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. Shut the fuck up. I'm old. What's up? break your neck. Is that a threat? But I can assure you that I've been there and I've witnessed Carry On um, kind of aggravate or agitate his mom overly, 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 or over, over the top, um, too much. But Kirk Franklin, I must say anything he makes is great because his son Carry On is fine as fuck, okay? That nigga is fine as hell. You guys don't know, I have interviewed Carry On Franklin, Kirk Franklin's son, in the past. Um, that is on my YouTube channel. It is also here on the podcast, you know, anywhere you listen to podcasts at, just search the Urban Binge Radio, boom, there we go. Um, and you can download any show that you like. I prefer that you download every show, but I guarantee you if you listen to season one and you begin to just listen up from season one till now, this present video that we're on right now, you'll see the difference in um, how great we've gotten. Um, at first, our sound was not so good, our... Um, video quality was not so good, and over time we've gotten better and better and better. So I, I encourage everyone to go listen to the Urban Binge Radio from season one up to the present. I promise you, um, you'll be like, "Wow, wow, you guys really did do a good job." Because we're constantly working on this shit, and we want to make sure that we are um, one of the greatest mediocre uh, podcasts out there. Because I know that we're not, you know, big name like. The rest of these motherfuckers, these are some big names out there. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Her. I am so tired of Gabriella Wilson. That's her real name, Gabriella Wilson. That's her real name. Her father, I believe, is Kenny Wilson. If you guys look up her father, her father is actually, he's from the industry. Her father has several, has several accolades. Um, he's been in... Uh, jazz or, 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 or rock group or something like that. He's worked with Aaliyah, 
Um, he's worked with Sony or, or some major record label. So he knows some behind the scenes stuff. And this is why her is so forced in our face. That's not to say her is not talented. Her is talented. More talented than a lot of these girls that are artists today. And that's just the truth, LMI. Um, her is really doing the damn thing. The girl can play the piano, she can play the drums, the guitar. And as you can see last night at the BET Awards, she really, she really showed that, which I mean, she always do. She is a show off to me. She is a big show off to me, but she did show off last night because she, what is the word, descended from the sky um, playing the drums. That's first of all, with a bright light shining on her. And she was playing the drums. Okay, she hit the ground. And then um, we know she knows how to play the piano. I don't think she played it last night, but she did play the guitar and the drums last night and sung. So she's very talented, multi-talented um, young lady. She's only 23. She's 24 as of yesterday. So her birthday was the same day as the BET Awards. I only know that because she posted on Instagram saying, celebrating my 24th birthday here at the BET Awards. Absolutely stunning first. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you so much, thank you. What a way to celebrate your birthday tonight. Man. Culture's biggest night, Black Excellence, the Year of Black Women. Tell us what it means to you. What? I mean, I'm celebrating my birthday and I'm also celebrating Black Women. It means everything. It, it feels like, you know, sometimes we're under-celebrated, so we should be celebrating Black Women every single day, but this is a very special year. It's a very special moment, and I'm happy. I was like, oh, okay, okay, so her birthday is today. Um, so she did come off as super drunk, okay? Let me just say that. At the end, like, she was coming off like, bitch, I took a lot of shots before I came out here. I'm feeling good. She was really giving me like she was drunk because her face, normally she keep this structured face where, like, she keep her lip a certain way. She keep her jaw something. She keep this, 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 this esque about her um, when she's performing and after she's done. This time, she was real loose going towards the end. She started off put together and ended just loose as fuck. Like, she was real fucked up. That's what it came out to me. Allegedly, I don't know what to say. That's just my opinion. I don't know if she was or not. Um, but she came off as that. And I mean, rightfully so, it's your birthday. And I'm at the BET Awards um, for the third time live. Because last year during COVID, the BET Awards were, it was virtual. Um, this time, she's currently at the BET Awards. So that's awesome. She also won an award last night, um, which, which is to be expected. I believe she won two if I'm not mistaken, her won two awards last night. Um, the one that I thought that her should not have won, especially, um, let me go to it. The award that I definitely thought she shouldn't have won. Okay. So, best female R&B pop artist um, was Beyonce, Janae Aiko, Summer Walker, SZA, her, and Jasmine Sullivan. I definitely feel that her should not have won that award, and Jasmine Sullivan should have won that, or Beyonce. Um, I don't give a fuck how many awards Beyonce have from the BET, from BET or whatever. She deserved to get that award, Beyonce. If not Beyonce, then Jasmine definitely. Summer Walker, kick rocks, bitch. Janae Aiko, kick rocks. SZA, I love you, bitch. You gotta kick rocks. But I do think that if Jasmine or Beyonce didn't get it, then next would have been SZA for me. Just because I'm tired of her ass. Not to say the SZA worked harder than her this year. I do believe her probably worked harder because her daddy is a fucking drill master in the music industry because he's a fucking fiend over this shit. He gives me, he pushed her. I found articles from when this girl was like six or seven back in her hometown. They have pictures of her in the newspaper. Her, Gab that's how I found out her name, Gabriella Wilson. I found her performing with her dad at libraries, at restaurants, just performing with her father everywhere. And um, she was just a baby, singing her ass off everywhere, all on the news and stuff, her local news. Um, but I, did, I don't think that she should have won that award. I don't think that that was for her. I think that's all she won. Hell, the BET Hurt Award, I was so afraid that she was gonna be a nominate, that she was gonna be nominated and win that one, shit. The BET Hurt Award. Her wins the BET Hurt Award. Today, her is quickly climbing the ranks of the music world's elite. She has won several Grammys, an Oscar, and quite ironically, a BET Her Award. Bitch, they would have kicked me out. But the BET Her Award did go to my girl, Sizzle. Uh, Alicia Keys was nominated, so done, featuring Khalid. 
uh, Brandy featuring Chance the Rapper, Baby Mama, Bree Steve, don't know the fuck that is, Kick Rock, anti Queen, we don't know the fuck that is, Chloe and Haley, Baby Girl, Bye Girl, Sierra and Esther Dean, rooted by SZA, Good Days, winner. Uh, but I think Brandy featuring Chance the Rapper should have won that over SZA. I don't even know what the fuck Good Days is. What's Good Days? I ain't heard that shit. I don't know it. Jay singing it right now. You know it. I don't know it. I don't know it. I don't know that song. I do not know it. I might do, but I don't. I, I can't think of it. But Baby Mama didn't win. They always snub Brandy. Then she get up on the BET uh, microphone. She get up on the stage to perform a song. Her mic and shit fucked up all the time. It's like, damn, they just be sabotaging her, don't they? Shit. She said, fuck 106 to Park one time. And y'all be doing her dirty every time. Before I move on from Kirk Franklin, I want to say Dr. Bobby Jones' Best Gospel Inspirational Award, okay, was nominations were B.B. Winans, In Jesus' Name, and C.C. Winans, Never Lost. Ain't that crazy? Normally they do albums together and they're nominated against other people in, you know, as a group. This time they're nominated against each other. The first name on here is B.B. Winans, In Jesus' Name. The second name here is C.C. Winans, Never Lost, okay? The third nomination on this motherfucker is her. Hold us together. Why is her being nominated on a gospel album? I mean, on a gospel award, for a gospel award. Why is she being nominated for a gospel award, her? I just don't understand that. That don't make sense to me. Okay, next is Kirk Franklin, Strong, God, okay? Marvin Sapp, thank you for it all. Tamala Man, Touch From You. And the winner was Kirk Franklin, of course. I mean, it never ends. Kirk Franklin will always Always, 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 no matter what. If you are nominated against Kirk Franklin and you're a gospel artist, just know you're gonna lose. Only person that cannot lose against Kirk Franklin, probably, possibly, is Dunning McClurkin on Yolanda Adams. Other than that, sorry. Lately, it's been Leandria Johnson and Tasha Collins, but they weren't nominated, so I guarantee if they were nominated, they probably would've taken home over Kirk Franklin. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Speaking of her, <laughs> Scott comes out, and she comes out with Tyler Perry cast. Um, because Tyler Perry has a new show, I guess, or a new movie called Sister. You can do Oh, this guy. The song I'm about to sing is called Miss Celia's Blues. <laughs> sister, you've been on my mind. Oh, sister. Yeah, so he has a new song. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the intro song, because Tyler Perry is a billionaire. So he can pay Oprah Winfrey and Harco Studios to use that song for his intro. Um, I think that would be great, Tyler. If you're listening, you should definitely use that song as the intro of your show. Uh, anyway, Jill Scott comes out and she commends um, her. Um, she was really feeling her performance. You can tell the excitement in her throat. I just want to say her is a whole shero. She fell out the sky, played two instruments, and was flawless. It is the everything for me, young sister. I'm so proud. Oh. You know, she really sounded like in her throat that she was really proud of her. And I was like, oh, that's some, 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 some. Anyway, um, Taraji P. Henson did her damn thing. She was the show for the night. And she did the damn thing, I must say. Although, I love that this was the year of the woman. Tonight you're going to get 100% of our full blackness, okay? Because this is where our black entertainment matters. Where we matter. It's 2021, and we are celebrating the year of the black woman. <laughs> Period. I see you city girls. <laughs> okay, you know BET has a slogan or a saying every time they come on the BET Awards, they have to get saying black, all, everything, you know. Um, and this time it was the year of the woman. Uh, so that's why so many women were celebrated tonight and so many women performed and won awards tonight. But Taraji did her thing. I just wish that this was the year that Jada Pinkett and Will Smith would have come back. Um, I know that one day they'll probably bring all of them back to do one last um, run of a host or something like that. But I think that um, Jada Pinkett and Will Smith killed it that one time that they hosted it. Jamie Foxx has hosted enough. We don't want Jamie Foxx to host it anymore. But to put Jada Pinkett and Will Smith back there Hosting it, they fucking killed it. Do you hear me? They killed it. Uh, Monique, bring her back. Let her get up there and do her damn thing. But um, Taraji, that's my girl, Taraji did a really good job. Taraji actually followed us here at the Urban Bend, so we appreciate you, Taraji, for following us 
on our Instagram page at the Urban Binge. Not radio, but at the Urban Binge. You can search for us on our podcast. Um, just search on Google, the Urban Binge Radio, or just search your favorite podcast app. Uh, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify Podcasts, we're on Google Podcasts. Um, we're on um, several different podcast index. Um, we're, we're on several different um, podcast apps or podcast locations where podcasts can be found. You just search for the Urban Binge Radio. Also, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and make sure you hit that bell so you can be notified of the video that we post when we go live, baby. Let's move. Some of well deserved, much needed. Uh, I guess not much needed, but well deserved um, uh, honorary award. She has been in the game for a long time. I really thought she would have been receiving an award like this. Um, she is the Queen Latifah, um, the lady of hip hop rap. Now she, I think she hosted the BET Awards before, and she did not do a good job. She was dry as hell. I would never want her to host the BET Awards ever again. Only thing she needs to host is the Oscars or the Academy or something. Never the BET Awards. Queen Latifah better not ever get that damn job again. If you do Queen Latifah, you need some help. Because you're not funny. You didn't do a good job when you did it before. Or well, anytime you host a show, it's real dry. Speaking of Queen Latifah's um, honorary award that she received for the night, Lil Kim came out and MC Light, and I forgot the other lady name who came out and performed. Um, they all came out and performed, but Lil Kim... I think we had a lot of stuff to say about Lil' Kim. I really think she's bringing her face back. I think she's bringing her look that she had back to the forefront so that people can stop talking so much shit about her, and I really appreciate her for that. But her face is really stiff. Kim, I don't know if friends or anybody has told Kim, Lil' Kim this, but tell Lil' Kim she gotta stop going to go get some shots in her motherfucking face because the bitch can't move her cheeks, the bitch can't move her lips, the bitch can't move her chin. Bring the subject matter. But... She is the mother of Nicki Minaj. Man, fuck that! I'm gonna say, she is the mother of Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj literally was birthed from her and perfected everything that Nick, that little Kim possessed. Everything that Queen Latifah possessed. Everything that MC Light possessed. Everything that Moni Love. Everything that these women possessed, Nicki went and mastered it. And killed the motherfucking game. Period! Um, we do know that Queen Latifah is on the Nicki hate train. She doesn't fuck with Nicki Minaj. Um, and that was in the past that that, that was revealed. Um, but she don't really fuck with her. I remember her, I remember some drama behind that or something like that. But um, Lil' Kim, with this Prada tag on the front of her bang, and the bang was cut down. I think she is very, I think her swag and stuff is a hunt, okay? People were saying it's a shower cap for me. You know, a couple of people were saying that she looked like she had on a shower cap or a hazmat suit. Um, but, you know, I think she looked great. I think Lil' Kim looked great. Um, I do think she needs to stop getting that shit done in her face. Because the bitch can't move it a bit. That shit's stiff as fuck. So she do need to stop getting that shit done in her face. But, for the, for the most part, Lil' Kim is a legend. And she is um, stiff as well. She's a legend. And she's stiff, and she's really showing us what it's like. She's old, she can't move. She's beginning to get like Queen Latifah like them. They can't drop it low no more and bend the motherfucking knees and, and do all the extra movements and shit while they perform. They can't, it's, it's, it's not happening anymore. No, I can't drop it like it's hot no more. I have to let it down like it's warm now. <laughs> it's just not happening anymore. It's just not happening anymore. You know what I mean? Um, so let's move on. Oh, okay. I am back. So I'm not live on um, on Vivo. I don't want to say the wrong shit, and um, it's fucked up saying the wrong shit on Vivo. I am live right now. So anyway, like I was saying, Queen Latifah, um, much I think it was much deserved um, honorary award that she received. Um, and Little Kim with her hazmat suit on and her shower cap attachment. Um, I think she is still a legend no matter what people say. Now, I didn't come up with that whole, um, with that whole thing of, of she has on a hazmat suit and all that shit. I'm just repeating what, what people said on, uh, Beagle. That's what people were saying on Beagle. And she with the hazmat shit, bullshit. Um, so that's, that's, that's Lil' Kim for you. Lil' Kim has always dressed weird, though. Come on. We gotta give it to Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim just dressed weird. That's Lil' Kim for you. Speaking of Lil' Kim and speaking of female rappers, Queen Latifah, Moni Love, 
all of them. Um, let's 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 talk about the nominations for Cardi B and um, the female rappers, right? So this is not the BET Hip Hop Awards, but Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion was killing last night. Um, Cardi B was nominated, I think, like five times, and Megan was nominated maybe like three times. Um, and I guess you could say Megan was nominated just uh, enough, I mean, probably four times, because she got nominated for WAP, uh, for Best Duo Song or something like that, and they got that for WAP. Um, so Cardi performed uh, with the Migos, and then um, Cardi, when Cardi came out, she revealed, first of all, she came out just studded, like, just star-studded. The bitch had on uh, Swarovski diamonds attached to her fucking uh, two. I really don't know if it was Swarovski diamonds or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, but the bitch was glittery and glimmery and shimmery and pretty as fuck. Her stomach was slapped dead out. You know, kind of, so, kind of, sort of like when Prince had his old ass out in that video. What's the name of that song when Prince had his old out, ass out? What is it, King Shabuggy? Shut up. Whatever the fuck the song is. Now move your big ass around this way so I can work on that zip up, bitch. That's how Cardi's outfit was yesterday. Okay, so let's move on. They did a really good job. The Migos stage set was beautiful, but their performance was very mediocre, very normal. Nothing special about the Migos' performance. Um, the same old, same old. I think that um, if you are a rapper and you're not a singer, you have a easy, you have it easier getting up on stage. So one thing that rappers need to work on and stop thinking that, oh, I can rap and just get up here and perform. It's not just about that. You need to work on your breathe, okay? Because when he goes them, they breathing, which is not good. It was like, it was as if the breathing, when they would take a breath or something, the lyrics was playing and, and low. Like their, 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 their track was playing really low. While you trying to take a breath, we hear y'all track playing real low. So like, try to work on your breathing, but breathe later. Take a deep ass breath before you get started um, uh, 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 offset with your big ass. Which one is it? Offset is the big one. Take off. That's what I meant. He really had a hard time with his breathing. Take off. He had a really hard time <clears throat> breathing and trying to rap at the same time. It was hard for him. Um, and Cardi, she killed it. She fucking killed it. She was running in the motherfucking heels with a full stomach. But um, when it was time for her to win the award for WAP, she was not there. Um, that's the song that won. And Megan came up and accepted the award and totally, it slipped her mind, totally, I know it did, to thank Cardi for even putting her on the song. Breath is caught and I can talk about it. I really forgot to say thank you, Cardi, for even putting me on WAP. She accepted the award on her and Cardi's behalf since Cardi was, was not there. Um, she performed and apparently dipped out, completely left the scene, and um, she didn't come up to accept her award, but Megan came up to accept her award, and Megan looked beautiful. She just forgot to thank um, Cardi B for adding her own song, and she was also very, very emotional, um, thinking about her mom. I think at that time she had spoke about her mom um, just passing and that she loved her mom so much um, and all that, so I, I think that Megan was gorgeous. I think she um, did a good job. I wish that uh, Cardi was there to walk up there with her so we could see both of them at the same time. It just, it just, I love to see stars together. Like when, when BET Awards send out like Denzel Washington and Angela Bassett, when they send them out to present an award, I just love to see that matchup, you know, or like um, Eva Marcel and Tyra Banks, they both come out and we ain't seen both of them together in years, you know, I like that type of matchup, but BET don't do the to the presentation, the presenters like that no more. When the presenters used to come out and talk for a long time, present this award, this award, this award. Most awards are done um, underhandedly, or not really underhandedly, but behind the scenes, and we can read about it later. And I think that BET did like a vote back in like 2013, 2012 about that. And they wanted to change the BET awards to having um, a, a bigger percentage of performers than talking. So they lessened the talking um, so they can have more performances um, because so many people were complaining about the commercial and not enough performances more talking more comedy than uh, performances so now it's like performance as a performance and my mom was just saying last night that BET is getting worse and worse with their timing they start at 8 and they end at 9 and then they end at 10 and they end at 11 last night I think they ended at like 11.35, 11.45 the show ended that was a long time the show was running for a very, very long time. Um, but I think it was a great show. I, I really, I really, um, I really, really loved um, the nominations and the performances. Uh, they were great. But that nomination that Cardi won WAP in, that nomination, let me see. 
that was um, video of the year. Video of the year was Cardi B up, okay, and then Cardi B wop, and then Chloe and Haley do it, and then um, Chris Brown and Young Thug go crazy, right? So, um, oh no, and Drake featuring Lil Durk and Silk Sonic. Leave the door open. I don't know who the fuck Silk Sonic is. I guess they just had to throw one more person in there. And I never heard Chris Brown and Young Thug go crazy. I didn't even know they had a song together. And Cardi B won that. Well, duh, Cardi B is nominated twice in a nomination that only has six people. And Cardi B is nominated twice. She had a, a much bigger chance of winning. So she did win. I just didn't understand why she was nominated twice in one category. It wasn't like WAP is Megan's song. It was as if BET forgot or something and thought that WAP was Megan's song and maybe nominated her twice in one category. But I've seen that before. I've, we've seen, I think on the Grammys, Beyonce was nominated for two different songs in one category before, if I'm not mistaken. But WAP got a few nominations last night. Um, but that one, Cardi did not come up. Megan went up by herself. Anyway, I, like I said, I, Megan did the damn thing. She kept coming up there accepting the award. She was like, damn, again? Again? And again? Um, best female hip hop artist. Ooh, my God. Megan Thee Stallion won that, and Nicki Minaj was not nominated in that category. It was Cardi B, Koi Ray, Doja Cat, Megan Thee Stallion, Lotto, and Sock, Wheat Tea. And the winner was um, Megan Thee Stallion. That was really, that was crazy shit. I was like, damn, Nicki Minaj was not nominated. Nicki always win in that category, and this time Nicki did not win. Cardi started winning after Nicki Minaj, and then after that, I'm assuming Cardi was only winning the rubber pie in Nicki face. Because Cardi really can't rap to me and she didn't deserve that award. I think Nicki still deserved that award when Cardi won um, Best Female Hip Hop Artist, I think last year and the year before last or something like that. I think that always Nicki deserved that award. Now at this time, if Nicki was nominated and Megan was in the same category as her for Best Female Hip Hop Artist, then yeah, Megan do deserve that um, against Nicki. Uh, I think, because Megan been working hard out here in the street. Uh, if they would have gave that to Cardi over Megan Thee Stallion, I definitely would have hit the motherfucking floor and rolled in front of my goddamn couch. You can't even sit on that bitch. The fuck? Yeah. Tyler Perry came. They threw shots. One of the ladies decided to open up her, open up with, or open up, open the nomination with, um, because you know, there's a little bit of improv before you open up the, the nomination in book. And so what she wanted to come out and say, was that Monique should stop shaming people when it comes down to wearing bonnets. From Tyler Perry's sisters on BET. Before we uh, get to the nominees, I'd like to address a global issue. Bonnet slander. Oh, yes. I mean, as long as the locks are protected, it's all good, right? I just want to know how this is an international issue. Okay, let's face it. If Gucci made bonnets, everybody would wear them. That's true. That's true. I think bonnets can be a fashion statement. I mean, who cares if we wear our bonnets in public? I am dreaming of the day where the little girls in the humid streets of New Orleans and the dirty subways of New York City can join hands, bonnet to bonnet, bonnet to bonnet. And all I could think of was, was this Tyler Perry doing? Because y'all are Tyler Perry cast. Moni and Tyler Perry don't get along. Why the fuck would you come out here talking about shaming people with bonnets, stop doing that? You don't know what people look like, bitch. Are you kidding me? Shut the fuck up and sit the fuck down. You're a new um, actor that Tyler Perry just pulled from the fucking dirt, okay? Um, you don't come for Monique. This bitch is a legend. And no matter how upset we are with Monique, I believe for the most part, if we took a vote in the black communities across America, most people would still be on Monique's side. Most people are still featuring Monique. We still love Monique. Um, that Just because y'all find an issue with her over there in Hollywood don't mean we found an issue with her in our heart. From being Nikki Parker, from Queen of Comedy, um, like we love Monique and her, her jokes. That's what we grew up on. So um, her coming out throwing shots at Monique, I think was just a bit much. And you need to shut the fuck up and sit down. Tyler Perry, speaking of Tyler Perry, he did just open up, um, he is joining in with TD Jakes for a mega entertainment studio company. Um, so TD Jakes, as we know, has created a lot of great movies. Just to get off subject a little bit, um, uh, movies like uh, Not Easily Broken, Woman Thou Art Loose, um, and uh, People. So, uh, a couple more movies TD Jakes has, has created and wrote, produced, directed. Uh, so now him and Tyler Perry are going into business together, um, and they'll begin creating 
movie for the culture, um, and, and hopefully movies that will move people's spirits like Woman Thou Art Lose Peoples and um, Not Easily Broken. He T.D. Jakes is a great director and producer, and of course we all know Tyler Perry. <laughs> The other presenter of the night um, was Eva Marcel. Eva Marcel looked amazing. I must say that girl looked amazing. She never um, fails, you know, with her swag, uh, with her red carpet. When she stepped on the red carpet, please believe Eva Marcel came to break your motherfucking camera, bitch. Because you're going to be flashing and flashing and flashing and flashing and flashing. I mean, because she gives, she just, the way she gives for the camera, she just gives. Like, she just completely gives. So every time she presents, um, an award, no matter where, she is beautiful. You know, I don't like her too much for Housewives of Atlanta, and I've expressed that, that I don't like her for the Housewives of Atlanta. But when she presents at award ceremonies, Eva Marcel gives. Okay, she gives me a like. The bitch is beautiful. I love Eva Marcel. But somebody who I do wish to have seen um, presenting um, more often are people from the Housewives. Um, black housewives like Garcelle Beauvais and um, the new one from the New York housewives, the black girl over there. And Nene Leakes and Portia Williams, especially Candy Burr, is presenting an award for best duo or group song of the year. You know, Candy Burr is and Coco, since they did a, a verse, you know, match those two, those two up to present an award. I think that would have been great uh, to see those two. Or Portia Williams and Candy Burr, hell. Ladies and gentlemen, Portia Williams and Candy Burris coming out to present an award. I think that's Moving on, Eagles and Cardi B being pregnant with baby number two. The misconception is that female rappers can't have a baby or your career is over. Or even with R&B singers who are at the top of their games, if you have a baby, your career is over. Cardi B is showing not to get baby number two and can continue, they're not. Although, what album have we had since Culture has been born? Have we even had an album since Culture has been born? I don't even think so. We talked about Lil' Kim already and her stiff ass fucking jaws and her stiff ass face. She needs to stop getting that work done because she cannot move her chin. She cannot move her mouth. The bitch is stiff and completely Lil' Kim. You fucked yourself up, baby girl. Audra Day, I'm not, I, I don't feature Audra Day. Um, I'm not a fan of Audra Day. That's not to say that Audra Day cannot sing. I am just not here for Audra Day. Um, I think that she is another artist that has been forced, forced and mushed in our face until we like her. And I don't understand why her and Andre Day have been forced and pushed oh, all in our face and I don't feature neither one of them. I'm not a fan. I'm not not big time. I'm not a major fan of either one of them. But speaking of Andre Day and documentaries and old school and can't hardly sing and I don't know why the fuck you an artist. Um let's talk about Jennifer Hudson. A lot of people was not feeling Jennifer Hudson's wig last night. Overall, I think Jennifer Hudson looked mediocre always. She looked the same, boo-boo, bye-bye, ha-ha, whatever. That's Jennifer Hudson for your ass. One thing that I don't like is that they chose Jennifer Hudson for this Aretha Franklin uh, a biopic. I just don't think that, I mean, I think that acting-wise, she, she can do Aretha, but singing, they should have put Fantasia on vocals and let ja uh, Jennifer Hudson move her mouth, or Jasmine on vocals and let Jennifer Hudson move her mouth. Like, I just don't see how Jennifer Hudson is going to give us Aretha vocally. I think that she can act. Um, look, Aretha, I mean, Jennifer Hudson, she kills acting. But singing Aretha songs and being Aretha vocally in the studio is just not, um, no, no. I don't know why the fuck they chose her. I know Aretha requested, but nah. Megan performed and did an awesome job, um, both times. So Megan performed twice. Um, Megan came out and killed a motherfucking game the first time. And then the second time Megan came out, she came out with DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled brought out Lil Durk, Lil Baby, Da Baby, and her, and Megan. Um, and as you remember, if you guys don't remember, Megan and Da Baby got into it um, the other day on Twitter. So um, to me, it seemed like the beef kind of spewed out on uh, on the state. Uh, this is about eight days ago, right? Megan Thee Stallion called out the baby for retweeting a joke about her alleged shooter, but he insists it was a Twitter glitch. In July 2020, Megan Thee Stallion was allegedly shot in the foot by rapper Tory Lane. Um, the rapper, the baby, retweeted a tweet that joked about Lane shooting Megan. Megan called him out on Twitter, but the baby denied that he intended to share the tweet. 
The baby retweeted a tweet that said, I guess the baby, the baby, and Tory Lane's cool now because they shot somebody and don't have to do no jail time, right? According to Vulture.com, the tweet referred to a Memorial Day weekend shooting in which a member of the baby's entourage was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder, according to ABC News, but it also referenced a shooting last summer that injured Megan herself. Um, so, bold, semi-automatic. Rapper Tory Lanez allegedly shot Megan in the foot during a pool party in July 2020 and October 2020. Tory Lanez was charged with one count of assault with um, semi-automatic firearm. Of course, we already know that. Of course, I see in. Um, Megan and the baby had several songs together, but the baby who collaborated with Megan said in a subsequent tweet that he did not intend to retweet no silly shit and has been refocused on promoting, promoting his new single, Ball If I Want To. Tina Snow said, Support me in private, this is a salary, support me in private and publicly do something different, the Houston rapper said in a tweet on Saturday. These industry, industry men are very strange. This situation ain't no damn beat and I really wish people would stop downplaying it like it's some internet shit for likes and retweets, okay? That's what she tweeted. And um, it was more, it was, I don't even see the rest of, um, oh, he said, stand on what you stand on, baby. That's what he tweeted back to her. I don't know what the fuck that meant, but Megan wasn't having it. So apparently to me, it looked like when Megan came out on the same track, she on the same song, DJ Khaled got them featured on the same song, because it's just normal. They both do, you know, they, they keep doing songs together, which I assume a joint album was coming out soon. I thought about that, but it probably won't happen now. But Megan, Megan and, and the baby, they're not on good terms no more. So it gave me that when Megan performed, she, as you can see, she kind of teeter-tottered off the stage. And the baby came out afterwards, and they were supposed to end the song all together because they all was on the stage together. Lil Durk, DJ Khaled, Lil Baby, Da Baby, and Megan supposedly, but Megan asked Tita Tata to fuck up out of there before the baby could come out. So um, I'm assuming she was just like, nah, not feeling it, deuces, I'm out. Um, because of this, you know, because he retweeted stuff like this. And from my understanding, he did a song with him, but if that's not true, then that's not true, allegedly. He did a song with him, um, from my understanding. So that's what I got from that. That's, that, was, that was real messy. Because usually Megan and the baby is together. And it wasn't like she was going to go get dressed for another performance or nothing. Because after DJ Khaled performing, she didn't perform again. She performed before that and then that time. And then that was it. And she started accepting the award. So I don't even know why she got the fuck off the stage and didn't do the big woo ha at the end. And, and, and end the show or the performance with the rest of them. Like they all ended it together. Right? Uh, but but Megan did a good job. Megan looked beautiful. I hate that when she smiled, all her gums show like a horse. I don't know if people call her a horse back in the day, um, and that's why she called herself the stallion. But when she smiled, like all her gums show, just like a horse. And she favored Nene because Nene do the same shit. Nene do the same shit. Her fucking mouth fucked up like that too. I mean, her her mouth ain't fucked up. Megan mouth ain't fucked up. She beautiful. Speaking of not being able to breathe well and, and learning how to rap and breathe and in your breath your breath of breathing techniques as well as performing at the same time, um, Moneybag Yayo. That nigga did not do a good job. That nigga was worse than the Migos with the breathing. Like he kept stopping complete. Like then you that nigga was doing 30 second stops, okay? I'm being a little dramatic, but that it was very noticeable that the track kept playing for him. And this is his first time, I think, this is Moneybag Yayo, one of his first times being on the stage like this. But damn, nigga, I'm like, get it together. You a new performer, you a performer, you new. Come on now. You sit up here and give us no half job, no fucking 10 minute performance. I mean, no fucking, um, the song is probably three minutes. He gave us one minute of his time, vocally. Nigga barely raps. He don't even got time today. He don't even got time today. Nigga wasn't saying shit. I'm like, damn, nigga. The fuck? Money bag, yeah, yo. Get your shit together, money bag, yeah, yo. Money bag, yeah, yo, did not do a good job. I don't give a fuck. He did not do a good job. His breathing was off. He needed to breathe better. Do better, my nigga. He was worse than Amigo. To teach money bag, yeah, yo, a lesson, they should not invite him to the BET Awards next year. I don't care how popular the song is. He don't need to be invited back. He can be invited in October to the BET Hip Hop Awards, but he should not be invited back to the BET Awards because he didn't do a good job. He needs to help himself. He needs to do better on the breathing book. Tyler Slater did a good job. Very um eclectic. Um, but mm, good job. Same old mediocre bullshit he be doing. Um, but I love Tyler the Creator and his whole his whole thing. Um, but something I, I realized. 
BET was really showing out last night for the gay community because they allowed Tyler Creator to perform, who is openly bisexual, um, and they honored Queen Latifah, who is openly gay, um, and they also allowed Lil Nas X to perform and, you know, what he did, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And they also, um, um, who else did they honor? Oh, MJ Rodriguez. They allowed her, speaking of um, people who presented, MJ Rodriguez was somebody who presented from the show Pose, the transgender. Um, she presented an award last night, the BET Her Award at that, Her Award, which is for women um, of color, and she was the one that presented that award. Isn't that awesome? I think BET was really showing out for the LGBTQ community at the same time as black and women. They, they really paid attention to um, to that, like they, they the detail for, 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 for that, like I, I really appreciate it. They made sure they honored women, of course black, and the gay, the gay community was just fully included in the show. So thank you, BET and Deborah over there at BET. Y'all did the damn thing. I believe that's her name, Deborah. Roddy Rich, my nigga, he did a really good job. I think that he deserves to come back to the BET Awards next year. Um, Roddy Rich did a really good job. I do believe he deserves to come back next year, but not money bag, yeah, yo. I got that money in my time today. I got money in my time today. Nigga, bye. Shut the door on his ass. Don't let him back in. Uh, one thing I did notice though that BET did a good job with is gearing away from talking about the pandemic so much. Um, they might have brought up the pandemic through via a presenter or Taraji, the host, um, slightly, but they rarely talked about the pandemic. Rarely talked about the pandemic. Um, they did the BET tribute with all the dead people pictures floating through. And with that, um, it was a lot of people that I feel like they missed out on. Maybe they counted them last year in the BET tribute for the deaths. Um, but this year, I didn't see a lot of people and it was COVID. So that was something that was awesome. I don't know if they missed people or if a lot of people that are celebrities did not die for the year of 2020. But I swear they did. On the Academy Awards, we have a lot of people. That should be going all these white people that died and old-ass people that was on the show back in the 20s. It's 1920, she was on The Wizard of Oz, the original series, not the movie. She died and she was 107. Damn, Academy Award. But BET did gear away from talking about the pandemic so much, and I, I, I appreciate that. They really paid attention to detail, in-depth detail rather than surface detail. You know, like they didn't put a lot of time in directing and producing, or directing more so, their artists on the stage. I guess it seemed like they kind of left that up to their team um, to do, but BET should have overseen. They really should have did a better job in overseeing the performance. Somebody that I did expect was more R&B artists. It was not as many R&B artists as BT usually does. Um, like I expected Miguel. Where was Usher? Where was Miguel? Where was the male R&B artists? There was not a lot of them. Uh, but I guess because the slogan tonight was Year of the Woman, then they really pulled out women performers uh, for the most part. For the most part, it was a lot of women performers. Um, the BET Matter stage usually ain't popping as much as it was last night, but the BET Matter stage was truly popping last night. The shit was off the chain. Every artist that they put up there was off the chain, except for that one bitch with the antennas on top of her head. I don't know what the fuck she was doing, but, one, but what Jay said when Jay seen her, Jay pulled the cat wings on her ass. Where were your antennas last night? Where was your antennas when them niggas was stealing my shit out the stove? I didn't see him take anything. You didn't see him take anything? Well, look next time. Use your eyes. They ain't supposed to just be hazel. They supposed to do some goddamn work around here. When I tell you I bust the fuck out laughing at that shit, cause that bitch had antennas on her. She was like a roach. Cause these cockroaches would've cleaned me out this season. Speaking of cockroaches. The girl on the BET Matter stage, that bitch looked like a roach. She had antennas on her motherfucking head. Seriously. I'm on, not just speaking of, speaking of Eva and, um, speaking of Eva and MJ Rodriguez being presenters, Lauren London was also a presenter who we have not seen in a very long time since, um, Nipsey Hussle, um, was shot and killed in Los Angeles, um, so we haven't seen Lauren London much, and Naomi Campbell, who we have not seen in a very long time, she came out to get an award as well. Anyway, okay, I'm almost done here, DMX Tribute. 
did a really good job with the DMX tribute. Although for the whole night they kept saying that it was gonna be star studded, I expected it to be star studded. I expected it for Jay Z to pop out of nowhere. I expected it for um like just a lot of a bunch of New York niggas to just pop out of nowhere. And they really didn't. Buster Rhymes came out and Swiss Beats came out, a couple faces that I remember, Jada Kids, um, but uh and what's that other nigga name? Um I can't even think of the other nigga name. But it was a couple niggas out there that came out, but they weren't really, they weren't really um, giving me star study. Uh, person that I was excited to see was Buster Rhymes. And then they had one guy, I forgot the guy from the, um, the zombie from Walking Dead, the black guy. Um, yeah, him. him. He actually was um, doing like this skit acting out as if he was um, DMX. And I think that they should do that. I think he should play DMX. Um, I think that right now he has a gray beard. Like DMX died with a gray beard um, and kind of heavy set. You know, we're not used to seeing DMX uh, on the heavier side and with a full gray beard and stuff. But this time he had a full gray beard and the way he died. And the way this guy looks, he never looked like this. He's heavy. You know, got some weight on him and got a great beard. So I'm thinking they're probably filming a DMX movie now and they're gonna film the end of his life with where where this actor's body size and look is now. And they're gonna have him lose weight and become the skinnier drugged out DMX after they film the later life stuff. What's gonna be hard is if they fuck up something, this man lose all that weight because he got to gain that weight back to finish the movie. And that's gonna be the hard part. But DMX tribute, I loved it. Busta Rhymes was the main part about it that I loved. Um, and Swiss Beats, that dick was slank again. He had on yellow gym shorts, and that dick was not sitting still. That shit was from thigh to thigh. Every time his leg moved, the dick moved from that thigh to that thigh. He was playing ping pong with the ball, and it's it. Side to side. Go back and watch it, y'all. See if he's like line and line. Um, Megan. I already talked about that. She won viewer's choice. Um, Megan won viewer's choice. I think it was well deserved. Um, I think she deserved that award. I don't think anybody else in that nom in, in that in, none of the nominees in that court category deserved the award more than Megan did. Megan definitely been working her ass off, and I like to believe that Nikki and Beyonce voted for her. That is what I like to believe. I just like to believe that Nikki and Beyonce voted for her and was like, okay, yeah, um, we want her to win, not Cardi. Um, you can't talk Cardi. I'll just talk shit. That was just a joke. Put it through. I'll just show. I don't want nobody to come to me because I'm talking about Cardi B. Because Jay, he in the kitchen right now. He loves Cardi. Bitch, I love Cardi too, but I love her personality, not her rap. She can't rap to me. But Megan winning viewer's choice, that was awesome. She was like, thank y'all for voting for me. Bitch, you welcome, bitch, and I voted for your ass. I love um, I don't love her like that because I don't know bitch. I fuck her. Some artists, though, I do feel are overrated. Like I was talking about earlier today, I feel like or overly pushed, like um, her and Audra Day. I feel like they are both just overly pushed and forced in our face when they are not, um, they just don't, Audra, they don't give it to me all the way. Um, Audra don't give it to me all the way. But who do give it to me all the way is her. But I don't really fuck with her like that because she keep on just like throwing herself out there like, damn, we kind of see you, bitch. I am. Or Jazz and Sullivan. All them awards that her won last night are supposed to win to Jazz and Sullivan. That's how I feel. Wow. So then my camera's about to die. Um, I have to come back and talk about the rest of this stuff that I want to talk about. Guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, I'm going to do a part two of the BET Awards recap. I'm going to come back and talk about Lil Nas X and um, a couple more things that happened last night, like Carisha and Megan Thee Stallion at the after party for the BET Awards hung in each other, fell up, down, and did not care if cameras were around. I also want to talk about later um, the Instagram star or Vine star, um, also social media star, let me say that, the real super who wears wig, um, he also had a lot to say about Lil Nas X being, uh, kissing a guy and gay thing being promoted all over public television. So I, I will be back for another episode, part two of the BET Awards coming up. So we'll be talking about Lil Nas X, Kawisha and Megan Thee Stallion, tongue kissing, and um, a couple more things that happened after the show and before the show, like the red carpet. You guys, make sure you stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, um, give us five stars, make sure you hit that bell, hit that thumbs up, um, and make sure you guys give us five stars on our podcast, the Urban Bench Radio. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you.
just 